Plus live. And we're live. How are hey, we doing, hey, today? Hey. What's up, Kev? Long time no see. <laughs> yes, it has been. Oh. I feel like this is just a continuation of our dead show last night. <laughs> right, that dark star. Mm. I know. Tasty, tasty stuff for late, late years. I so, must good. Say. so good. So good. But you know what's big on Twitter these days? The fish bracket. The and fish. it is just, I mean, there's not really that much surprising, but what's your uh what's your view from the field there? You know, I, I saw a couple comments today about the seating wise having uh some of the bangers versus the um ballads, which the seating kind of ends up that way. It's just like how seating works you know like good songs right. and the ballads kind of get shuffled down the bottom because, there's only so many songs yeah and they're not really a ballad band sure there's a few good ones but you're not really it did it's seem very it, it did seem very ballad that <clears throat> maybe you could have had two ballads go up against each other and at least yeah. get one of them to the next round and see which one people kind of prefer, like maybe, I don't know, a Brian and Robert versus a Fast Enough for You or something like that, or a lengthwise against a Fast Enough. But I don't know. They're not going to get very far, right? Like they're still going to end up <laughs> getting stuck somewhere and defeated. So it's just sort of the way I think it works out. It's sort of the ballads and some of the 3.4.0 newer songs that get kind of tossed in against well, some of the. I, I tell you what, scenes. in the yellow bracket, the Let's two of my surprising up. things were Pebbles over Caspian and Ruby over Brother. I can see that more because Brother is, you know, a one-off kind of thing. But, you know, the Pebbles over Caspian by a two, two to one-third margin was quite surprising. Yep, yep. Yeah, I don't know if anybody can see kind of these, but I'll scroll down and look at uh, where we're at with some. You can see the ones that I voted for. <laughs> but um, we'll get down to where I think we are right now. I mean, you know, you're still going to, it's again, sort of some of these bigger songs against some of the slower songs. I mean, I, I went for Waste Over Curtain, you know, like sometimes you, you pick some of the songs, but I mean, like Amaze Over Stealing Time, that's rough. Right, Jin with a 95.4% of the vote over the well, which arguably is, you know, in any other matchup might have gotten 15%. Yep. Yep. Uh, I and totally I mean, stacked it around. Just, I mean, some of them are so lopsided, but see, then you get a nice one like this, like a sample on a foam, you get sort of, it's nice and close because I feel like it kind of should be. I feel like sample sometimes might have advanced further had it not gone up against the foam. If it had got a ballad, it might have been right. able to get through there, right? But then you've got like things. See, I went fast oh, enough on that one. You know, fast see. enough was, was their first true ballad, was their first true love song, I feel like, when they were trying to break into that space yeah yeah and i mean like here you go a trouncing like oh, lawn boy against bowie i mean bowie's no. bowie's a heavy hitter you're gonna it's gonna crush but putting against lawn boy lawn boy might have been able to advance had it gone against something a little bit smaller than that you know what i mean so look looking at the gin how well that did they may have become that may have become the odds one favorite to win the whole thing yeah you know, I mean, just looking at that from there, you, yes. I mean, oh, Teela, like, though, so, man. Hmm. We talked about this one before. I know you're not a huge Teela fan, and Oblivion's a good song, but again, it's so new, right? Like, it doesn't have the uh, yeah. legs yet to get into it. It's a good song, but it's not there yet, and Teela just has so much of that history behind it, and people wanting to hear it, and some people still chasing it, and and what it is, and I told you backstage, like, I still think it's one of their more beautiful songs, which they don't have a lot of, so it's up there oh. for me anyway, so... I think There's we that, have a wave um, of hope coming up tomorrow. I don't know who it's playing, but that hasn't shown up yet, and I'm wondering if that has uh, the intestinal fortitude, so to speak. To through, to play. yeah. This was a tough one. Like I, I like Gula. Oh. Is such a good song. Golgi, though, again, the history. I went of Gula, Gula, man. I Gula's figured you would. I figured it's best. It's a tough call. Have... I mean, that one you could go either way. I just feel like Olgy's going to go through no matter what, so you might as well. well. Now, this one I think is one of the, the another one of those destruction ones. Yeah. Llama against Poorheart. I, I, I got a long you way was... to go. It's only got three ninety five in so far, but that's a pretty Gula, big blowout there. 
Gula gets the vote because of the interpretive dancing. <laughs> you like the uh the added the added like I like, love a dance. I love a whatever the Cassot Box song is that they dance in. I'm like, what is it? Uh, Turtle in the Clouds? Is that the one that they have a the little routine? The dance for exactly. So so you're you're adding in sort of that element of like the theatrics of it as well. Roy has broad with that. That was the that was the like bud of Broadway Trey was doing that kind of stuff. Totally. That, and, and then we got Mike's, a game edge out of it. Mike's, but look at how well Bugs doing compared to Mike's. That's pretty crazy. And this is one of those, I know uh, Funky Witch, Katie and I got into a discussion today about the purity of Mike's hydrogen hog. And she was saying that she likes the Mike's with a simple on there. I was like, but it's so. Thank you, Katie. It's my help <laughs> slip Frank. It's it's my help slip Frank. She's like, yes, but Mike's has the mean, no, are no nice guy lyrics. And I was like we can't judge lyrics like you can't judge the dead against fish lyrics because the dead's lyrics are always going to win out oh, you right just, right you have you to look at it as, as the composed suite of the songs and i just feel like so it's interesting though that mike's can be a standalone as far as those three go i don't think you could put hydrogen or pog and it gets as far as mike's alone would ever get you know what i mean like mike's right. is the dominant song of those three so you know hunter had got, that cia acid back in 65 <laughs> at berkeley or wherever and the, he like tapped into emerson he tapped into like the pulse of the american literary tradition there not exactly many people get that billy breeze <laughs> why are you losing you know that was my number one song you remember that piece thing i did 75 from 16 and uh -huh. i did their 75 best studio cuts billy breeze was my number one julius came in at six i believe hmm. I mean, it was winning when I when I first laid this vote down. Billy Breeze was ahead. I just think Julius, for me, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it. You'll probably hear me bitch about it a lot of times on the after shows because it's just, you know, but it's fun. And I, I feel like you said you like Billy Breeze studio, any like album. And it's it's what you, you know, it's kind of a live version, the studio version, like how you're weighing it. Is there theatrics in it? Whatever. To me, I, I don't know. Julius is just such a fun song. And I definitely, I don't know, for me, it was I not advancing. So this becomes an interesting question. How much does what you know about the song influence it? Because Tom Marshall talked to us about Trey's oldest being born and writing the song in their little house up in Vermont and the fireplace going. And when he was talking about that, I was like, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Of course, right? Like you're getting that almost like that Robert Hunter vibe of writing the song. And it, that has to, once you know sort of those things in it, it definitely, you know, kind of the backstory weighs into it, just like everything right. weighs into it for people. So it's always interesting to see what pe why people vote the way they want to vote and what, what songs, you know, do that for them. And another one here, like we talked about this backstage, Four Bins, Seven Below. Four Bins is one of those songs I feel like you said, people want to hear it like they want they're chasing it so to speak it's it's one of those, it's a game hinger it's like a popular Has a story trey gets to talk to me though that's not like a song that i want to hear all the time you know like it's that narration and that craziness to it like seven below is just i don't know it's such a fun beautiful song to me that i, I, I definitely I voted i definitely voted for forbins because it's so disjointed even the pretty part where they're like any time so you know that's okay, but the you know the falling apart. But seven below probably is a better song. Again, personal preference, and it's not necessarily voting. You know, when you get into these things, no, you don't really vote for the better. So you vote for what you like. You know, exactly. That's the whole point of this. It's a popularity contest. Exactly. Totally. And we got one here that I haven't voted for yet, so I'll let I'll let the chat influence my vote oh, here, God. and everyone can weigh in on what what you want. What do you think? My I mean, I, my old my oldest daughter's ringtone is my sweet one. Nice. So nice. I um I definitely voted for that. Wolfman's I I. I used to know this woman and when you called her phone, it said, please hold while we reach whoever. And then they, it played the Wolfman's part where he did the guitar sound that sounded like a phone ringing. And I was like, after that, I didn't like the song anymore. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> when he handed it to Liz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what the guitar was. And I was like, really? That's what we're going with. So here's what I will say. Like my sweet one, when it, when it, when it's, 
fit into the set sometimes it's such a perfect song for what it is right like we've talked about that on the after shows because it's nice it's short it's sweet it kind of just it plays its part really well when it's per when it's placed well in the set right like it really brings it and it's two and a half minutes three minutes long like it's not a long song so you kind of get in and out in and out boom i like punk it's rock. one of those that usually sets up something to come and comes out of something that was slow to get you kind of back up so i get that sure. It's a fun song. However, Wolfman's, especially the last, I don't know, few, five years, whatever, sure. this thing has become such the a jam Mexico vehicle. one was good this year, but I think the Mexico the year before was probably the premier 4.0 one. There's been a few that just, I mean, I have one of my best friends who I've been seeing fish with since 93. God, we've seen all the Red Rock shows together. He hates Wolfman's. Like, he hates it and i can never every time it, it starts like he's automatically uh and, like, goes pisses yes exactly and like i'm nice. always like how can you hate this song so much though like it's one of those where even if you don't like it like a ruby waves or a soul planet once you get through the lyrics and you get to the jam it jams like it usually has a great well, most jam of those songs it. do once you get through the lyrics so it's a right. matter of whether you dig the lyric or not and I think one of the funniest things ever about Wolfman's was listening to that interview with Trey, where he said he tried to write a Dylan song and he thought yeah. Wolfman's would be like his Dylan song. And this is my watchtower. <laughs> when you think of that though, you're like, man, I what? So off the mark. You're <laughs> like, so off the mark. I can't even think I, of a Dylan song that reminds me of Wolfman's that's in that same sort of vein. I, so I just, if, if I had to put up a Trey dylan song that dylan would have wrote i would go with sing monica because of the clever word play that tom has through it yeah that's something i could see dylan doing him latching one to some twist of a phrase and building a whole song off of song it off it yeah and i think you know lyrical wise i think a lot there's a few songs that you could say are dylan-esque but the way they're composed and played by fish would be completely different the way Dylan would play it. Right. Like it would be a totally right, different yeah. song, a totally different version, which could be cool to hear in that way. But right. anyway, I'm going yeah. Wolfman's. Oh, geez. Can I didn't know it was so bad. 90, 10. Wow. That's another can blowout we, right there. Can we take a left <laughs> turn? I, sure. I, I'll give it to you in two words, three words, diddler pink cocaine. That's all you need to know about her. Diddy is a diddler, and he shad stuff he shouldn't have on his computer. Apparently. Well, yes, but if you if you read the conspiracy theories, he's actually an informant trying to bring down everyone in the music industry. So that's why he's been able to get away with everything for so long. Well, you you know who got away with it was Pete Townsend. He got <laughs> caught with kitty porn, and he said he was doing research for a rock musical he was writing. Right exactly what's funny though is that diddy and then jay-z's right underneath right underneath that they're trending so why is jay-z trending with diddy is the bigger question anyway right. we'll get rid of this for now oh thank you fish live yeah it, it makes me very sad baltimore's my city as messed up as it is and as beat up as we are i love that if i if i was the beastie boys i would write a letter to the five boroughs about baltimore but <laughs> I'm not that smart. That was a pretty, uh, I mean, that's something you don't see every day. And I swear every time, I mean, I think everybody kind of feels this way, like going through tunnels, going over bridges. Sometimes you always think about what would I do if there was an earthquake out here? I always think of an earthquake. I'm like, what, would always I do? Me. what if there's a leak? You're like driving through and you see dripping water in front of you. You're like, I'm done. This no, yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, even as much as like going under overpasses of the freeway out here, when I get stuck at stoplights, I'm always like, man, if there's an earthquake right now, I'm kind of screwed. So I can't even imagine. I, I mean, luckily they shut down that bridge, but there were guys working on the potholes, unfortunately, up there and like some cars that did go. I can't even imagine how terrifying that well, uh, SC 95 runs through the Harbor Tunnel. Uh, the key mm -hmm. bridge is actually the way you get hazardous waste down 95 because you can't put it through the tunnel so that's what's going to screw up how are we moving the hazardous waste from new york to say florida or something where it belongs i don't know <laughs> where, where they take it where they're like hey we'll do whatever it takes here yeah it'd be interesting to see how long it's going to take to rebuild and and what's your your traffic situation everything's going to be like until then because i mean we haven't really experienced anything like that in 
I don't a lot like you say natural disaster, but an, I guess a natural accident type thing. I don't know. Like it's very yeah, it's pretty People crazy. We're out of hand with the conspiracy theories. <laughs> oh man, yes, exactly. Always, That's, it's that sad. is the the curse of social media. Is it's sad these days that you can't just have an accident or something happen without people feeling like there's some that other nefarious. video is so crazy yeah the way it just crumbles i mean you're like wow it, it makes you really think about how when you drive across a bridge you're on the bridge so it's bigger than it is i guess you know yeah it is and then seeing it from a distance and seeing it just fold like a a, a match like like it was made of matchsticks, you know. Like it's, it's pretty. It's I, scary. I found some pictures of the wire because there was a meeting place that it was in the background, and uh, that was like, wow. Well, weird thing. It, it, it's uh, you know, you can't compare it to other cities and things that are missing, but it is going to be a strange landscape until they mm -hmm. rebuild it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, especially you know, for you Baltimoreans that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of sad to see it'd be like if the Golden Gate Bridge went down or something or even the Oakland Bridge and you're like, it's just this thing missing now. So, yeah, yeah that's pretty crazy. It's yeah, pretty now crazy, if right? I was going to if I was going to pick a movie to make about someone from Baltimore or if you were going to, would you pick David Byrne, who went to Lansdowne High and lived here or Frank Zappa, who spent his early formative years here before moving to California? I'll do you one better. I would do John Waters. Oh, <laughs> the there you go. Who, who would you have play John Waters? John Lithgow, who? maybe? Who? John Lithgow? Maybe. He's getting a little up there, though. It'd have to be yeah, somebody younger, though, who you could, like, you know, get that pencil-thin mustache on him and, like, get, get the face right. You could probably find somebody. I have to think about that. But you could probably find somebody to fit that role very well. You get Brendan Fraser to play Divine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. I mean, this is, yeah, that's true. There is a lot going on these days. I mean, look at the whole, yeah. you know, and, and things, some things don't do anything to dissuade it. Look at the whole princess Kate thing. I mean, even after the video was released, people are saying it's an AI video. If you go back and watch some of the things in it and this and that. So you really, every now and then there is, truth to the conspiracy which then lends even more credence to wanting to have everything be a conspiracy and not trust anything so i just what's the movie know. what's the movie with mel gibson where he says that jerry garcia was a british agent wasn't that the conspiracy isn't it called conspiracy theory or consp <laughs> like i think it is right like i think that's it <laughs> that is old, what it's called <laughs> an old movie Totally. That is the best line, though. Yeah. But, you know, it's out there. It it's went so. down, but it didn't fully go down. Only sections of it went down and collapsed on itself. It didn't crumble into the bay uh, like this I, one did. I, I don't doubt anything, but I am a big subscriber to Occam's Razor. Whatever, with the least facts, the most, you know... Well, that solution is the right one, you know. When you've yeah, when you kind of cross out everything else, the last thing standing has to be the right. reason, right? So yes, right. and when you deduce everything down with logic or facts, then yes, you get there. But right. a lot of times we don't do these things down with logic or facts. It's sort of guesswork and conspiracies and hearsay and this and that. So it, it is, but it yeah. Is. So well, speaking of totally... real quick. Real quick, though, speaking of, since you brought it up, actors playing roles. There we go. I was like, we totally blew that I made we the blew trip. through that one, but I'm going back to it because it was a great segue into what we wanted to discuss a little bit here about actors playing roles. And I don't know if anybody else has seen it lately, but there's been some stills coming out from James Mangold's new film, the Bob Dylan biopic. They've been filming at the Chelsea Hotel in New York the last week or so, and Timothy Chalamet, fresh off his Dune 1 and 2 stardom, is playing Bob Dylan. And seeing the stills and whatnot, he looks pretty good. Like it's, He's it's a very pretty... beautiful man. He is a <laughs> very beautiful man. And he's very versatile. Let's from Wonka to Dune to now Bob Dylan. And I, I trust Mangold a lot. Like I'm a fan of Mangold. Logan was fantastic. He's a great director. So I'm looking forward to what he does with this picture. And I think it, it, it'll be a good one. I think Chalamet he, will nail a, it. And he's very idealized 
And looking at the pictures, he has the body gestures down. You get the feeling of that album cover, the freewheeling of him with the girl walking down the model, whatever her name was walking, you know, that unsure shrug forward. He has the whole thing down. I can just feel it. I'm, I think he's going to knock it out of the park. I think Dylan always has that, that look of confidence, but insecurity, you know what I mean? Like he's always got that to him and that comes through the music. And I think Chalamet is pretty, pretty well versed in, to nail that role. And another one that just, I don't know if it's, if he's fully been cast here or they've been talking about it, but uh, Jeremy Allen White from um, The Bear as Bruce Springsteen in a biopic coming out. And I think that's not a bad choice either. I think he kind what, of... What period of his life? The early years? Yeah, I think it's an earlier... earlier. The up-and-coming, struggling, either Born to Run's a hit or I'm done, I'm going to go Right, kind of thing, factory. and sort of the formation of the E Street Band and that whole sort of that that time, so... So uh, so when, when when Clarence first walks on it, the whole audience is going to cheer. It's going to be a course. great movie moment when he first of meets course. him. Yeah. <laughs> the big man, the big man. That's gonna and be I, you know, though. what'll be interesting too, and that will to see who plays the other characters, like who's going to play Niles, who's going to play, you know, Patty. Stevie. Who's gonna, Stevie, St Stevie should just play Stevie. He's an actor in himself, right? Like he should. Yeah, just but how are they going to make him look younger? My God, you could tell he's been a rock star for a long time. But just like they did with Indiana Jones, and you thought you the face with the CGI right. and shit, they could just do that with him and put him in there. I think it'd be funny if it was him in there. Take Steve about fifty as... off of him. He still hasn't <laughs> taken off the Sopranos weight. No, <laughs> he never will. That's him now. I'm surprised he's so agile and can play the guitar as well as he can be in that. But uh, who do you get to play, Max? Weinberg, I mean, he's got to oh, yeah. be integral. What what what, totally. what late Paul night show Schaefer. was he on? Didn't he have Paul Schaefer? What was the Max Weinberg work? Conan wasn't he on Conan? Maybe it was Conan. It yeah, was Conan, it was and Paul Schaefer was on Letterman. Yes, Paul Schaefer was yeah. on Letterman. The worst yeah. was uh, G Smith. I've always well, ratted, like ragged on that guy. When he was on Saturday Night Live, yeah. that was the. But then he man. played with Dylan from like '88 into the way into the '90s. He played with a lot. He was a huge studio musician, like played with Hall and Oates. He's played with a ton of people. Like G Smith was huge, but man, his Saturday Night Live days just drove me nuts too. Like it was just that was that was tough watching him. Well, he was a joke. He was definitely the butt of jokes in my definitely. friend group back in the late a '80s. Character amongst himself totally yeah exactly and i see somebody mentioned it too the the jerry garcia jonah hill no go i yeah that's the one talking these other ones i feel like they fit really well and i i, I can believe these guys didn't as they'll do something dumb didn't yeah. he like text somebody he shouldn't have or something stupid well he was like dating a well when him and his girlfriend broke up or whatever it came out that he was very insecure with her oh, you can't and, wear that in public kind of right thing. and yeah exactly so, I was puked yeah. on G. Smith's shoes. Thank you, Jason. You need to tell us that whole story. <laughs> we need to hear that. I wish you would have. That would have been an even better story, Jason. That's awesome. No, who? I mean, I don't. I think that whoever you get to play Garcia is playing off Broadway or somewhere in L.A. in some side street theater or something at this moment, and you aren't going to know who that person is, and they're going to have the look of the young Garcia. I don't think Jonah. Hill ever looked like Garcia besides he was pudgy. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think he, I don't know. I, I don't buy depending on the makeup and like how he looks in it. I just, I, I have a hard time transitioning him into that role and buying him right away that that is Jerry because Jerry's just so iconic and, and what he is. It's hard to imagine somebody faking it and being him. You know, you know, who, you know, who my favorite Dylan was, was Kate Blanchard. Yeah. Yeah. And that don't look back or whatever it was called. She was really good as Dylan and, you know, totally puts a whole new spin on the whole world. But because I mean, she's good in everything, though, she she's one of those like fantastic actor actresses that just can nail a role no matter what she's in. Let me ask you this, though, who who would play in the fish biopic? Who would we oh. have? playing our guys who's the guy who did sarah marshall oh, okay uh-huh what's um, his name yeah i know you're talking about uh, he would play trey i would have him play trey okay 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 i could see <laughs> that uh okay i could go with that jason siegel 
Um, let's see. Who would play Mike Gordon? Um, geez. There you go. Yeah, Jason Siegel. Yeah. Who would play Gordon? I would put Paul Rudd as Paige. <laughs> oh, nice. Paul I think Rudd he could pull Paige. off Paige. I don't know who would play Fishman or uh, Mike, though. That's yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank with somebody to play Mike, but... I mean, you could almost put Chalamet as Mike, you know, because he kind of yeah. has that... Fro like, give him the old fro. Give him a scarf. Look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Could almost get away with that. Elliot Gould, he's a little old, but that would be hilarious. That's great. Old Mike. <laughs> I love love it. That's it. a good one. A plus, Tom. A plus. <laughs> that's a good one. Seth right. Rogen is Fishman. There you go. That's not bad. Hey, that's not terrible. That's not horrible. Yeah. Huh. That's not bad. I could see that. I'm just not that hip. Who would Pedro Pascal play? Somebody was Brad saying Sands. that. Somebody was saying he's he would be a good. Uh, what are they saying? I a saw it earlier. But but I'm saying who would he play in the fish dock? Brad Sands maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I is the is the Marley like movie that bad fish finder? I have been uh, hesitant to try to find it and watch it. I had no desire. I and it's so sad because I always wanted I to see the I look forward Bob. to that. Twenty years ago I was looking forward to a Bob Marley. I was movie. just gonna say, remember when the Bob box set came out in like 93, 92, 93, whenever that was? It was so awesome. And like that was such the time you were like, why aren't they making a Bob biopic? Like it would be so good. What are they doing? And then 30 years later they finally do it. And he did sort of look like him but i just couldn't again i couldn't associate him with that character it just didn't fit that he was bob and well, he may have I, I think they tried i think they tried too hard to get someone who looked like bob marley instead of getting someone to maybe didn't really look like him but embrace the spirit uh, uh when in, oh. not that this guy i don't want to shit on anybody but you know you get where I'm going with that. I know what you're saying. Exactly. Happen, like, I feel though. like it's almost like you said with a Kate Blanchett as Dylan. It's almost like it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that looks like him. If you embrace the vibe or who it is like the, you know what I mean? You can get away with somebody else playing that role. If you just all of a sudden buy that. Oh yeah. He is Bob, you know? Right. I, I, I feel like I'm better served watching just the old concert videos because there's right. a lot of good footage of him i don't know and, and leaving it at that place and i tell you what seeing his kids they both you know are doing fantastic stuff out there so yeah. why not try to embrace you know it, it isn't going to be that you can only be one dylan you can only be one bob marley they're going to only be one robert hunter so you have to embrace the people who were not quite that but are out there doing it still i, I fear i read this thing earlier let me throw this at you mm -hmm. that hedge funds are buying up music catalogs mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. you're getting i want to dance with somebody pushed on you over and over again all of a sudden because some hedge fund bought it and is selling it out to everybody to do an ads and a cheap movie and this and that and how that is destroying new music because there's no reason to make new music if you're just going to buy up the old catalog and reuse it. That's an interesting problem, <laughs> you know, so to speak. And I don't know how you, uh, yeah, I don't know what the, what the solution to that is, especially because I mean, the music industry has always had such an issue with paying artists and how you distribute the music and how it gets from one thing to another. So I, I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing that are the artists getting money out of the hedge funds, buying it and replaying it. Like well, Stevie Nicks sold her whole catalog for $500 million. So now people can take stop dragging my heart around. And that guy who runs the hedge fund can license it out to anybody to make as much money as he can off of it to push, you know, it's in a commercial. Oh, I'm going to Google that. Oh, let me click the Spotify link. Boom. All of a sudden they have another, download or whatever they call it on spotify listen 
Yep. They call podcast yep. download for some dumb reason. Well, and I'll tell you the on the flip side of that too, with the streaming, which like don't even get me started with the streamers these days and what they can do and how they just cancel movies off of your subscription. You're like, wait, where did all these what what happened to the movie? Like I joined this because I wanted to watch these movies. But another issue they're having is when they're picking up the movies the music isn't licensed for the streaming, right? So old TV shows and some movies and stuff like Moonlighting took forever to get put on Hulu because they couldn't clear all the music that they used because it was such a musical heavy show. Mm -hmm. So they're having to replace a lot of the needle drop music and some of the music in the shows, which then changes the whole vibe of scenes of a show because you pick a song for a specific reason to put it in a show or for a specific moment or for a specific hit in something. And to not have that kind of takes away that moment in the show so that's another interesting thing, thing that's happening these days is they're replacing those songs that are in there and then again the artists probably aren't getting those residuals then now because it's getting replaced to go on to netflix or whatever so it's another way that you're screwing not right. just the art of the the film or the show but then the artists that were making the music that got put into the show so there's it it's it sucks <laughs> like there's just I so many issues with the streamers and everything my my apocalyptic view of the music industry is in with five within five years you'll no longer have artists true musicians writing commercials or incidental music and movies it will all be done by ai ai i gotta bring this up because that's a really good one that's almost perfect i didn't even think of that but that is a great one george michael from <laughs> arrested development he'll always be george michael to me but that is fantastic that's a good call sully well done good call you're a casting director. Yes, yeah, so we are talking a little business. We can move on, though. We just wanted to get into some of that. I mean, it's it's interesting. And speaking of releases and albums, our good friends, God Street Wine, have released uh, three albums. I think it's three All albums, of it. Right? All of All it's of back it. out there. $1.99 romances. It's fantastic. One of the best ever. One of the top, top. So Go buy the new released God Street Wine albums if you're a fan. Even if you're not a fan, go check them out because they are awesome and they are some of the best. Again, what I grew up in college and in the 90s listening to, they were one of my favorite low-key jam bands back then. I love them. I still love them. Lowe is a great guy. Friend of the show. Support them. That's our plug for you guys, God Street Wine. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, but they released all three of the LPs, which I find fascinating um yeah it's got it's got to be tough you know how do you how do you navigate things like that with i guess if you release something on album on lp you know you have a market like i've talked to um kevin from royal potato and his business on some levels is immune to the fickleness of the record industry because when he releases something people normally buy it because they trust him as a curator mm -hmm. as you know a guardian mm -hmm. of what comes out of there which i think is really i guess on some levels the way to go i'd rather have 10 people you know show up every day than 100 people show up once a month yeah i can yeah and i mean they're God, so it's, it seems like a good time for them to do it, too, after they just kind of did the reunion shows. They're kind of in the news a lot right now, at least like cranking stuff out. It's great to see. I'm hoping this is going to lead to more shows eventually, maybe a new album or something from them. But it's great to see them back out there and doing this and, and re-releasing these albums and stuff. So it's very it's, 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 it's exciting to see. I love it. Right. What would you want to see re-released? I tell you, I would love to see Mo put New Doy out again. I don't know when the last time they did, but it's one of my top albums. Anything that jumps out at you that you would like to see come back, even from back in the day, you know, there are some like Moon Boot Lover put out a couple great albums. Nobody ever heard of them, but two of the guys went on to form Soul Live, you know. But if you go back and find those early albums, it's it's so interesting. And a lot of it's out of print. Yeah, and gone. Like I don't know how you, wh like where the master tracks are, or how you can remaster it or find those, you know, type things anymore. That's funny. I didn't even thought about that. Yeah, and then Soul Live. I mean, I'd almost, I'd like to see some re-releases of old Soul Live albums. Actually, I mean, I'm sure they're yeah. still out there, but some right. of the early, early ones. Right. Know. Well, I tell you, my favorite thing is when they did Rubber Soul. 
And I've yeah. never, I, I've talked to Alan Evans a few times. He's a fantastic human being. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Um, but I've never asked him about that. The next time I talk to him, I need to ask him because that was simply fantastic. They were like, awesome. let's take the Beatles album pre before, you know, it was when they were dabbling. It's like yeah. when you eat just the first cap of a mushroom, but that's all you <laughs> eat. And you get a little high off of it. it before they did revolver and they're like, puddle me, you know? Right. No, oh. the toe in the water, the testing it. And that's the time where it's like the most kind of creative. And that's a great album to do that too, because you, there's a little bit of leeway too, with what you can do with it, with kind of what they left you with. So right. very yeah. cool. Robin tower. What is Robin tower trower in reference to Abbott? Abbott. Yeah. That's what the I was quarry bringing up. I remember the quarry, man. Yeah. yeah, that guy got screwed. We should do a documentary on what's his name? Best. What was his first name? The drummer yeah. who got kicked out of the Beatles. <laughs> I bet he'd love to talk to us. Oh, for sure. Pete Best. Pete Best. That, that's what that was it. Yes. Yes. That's, exactly. you, you, you get him you get him in a room and you're like, so what does it feel like to be almost there? <laughs> to be that close. <laughs> Like, oh man, I've been carrying that water for a long time. <laughs> you know, tough. I, tough. I think he's done okay. He tours his Pete Best band. He has enough name recognition, and I think he covers some Beatles songs. And probably. <laughs> like you think you'd have to. That'd be great. It'd be great. Uh we kind of blew through the half hour there, Kev. You want to catch us up on what's coming up and do our little housekeeping oh, yeah. here? Um Sunday we're gonna have a show of some kind. Hopefully, Tim will be back. He's out doing things, taking care of himself. So we want that next week. We're going to spin the wheel in a little bit. We have that coming up, a little foreshadowing for the what club next week. And, you know, we also have the sphere coming up. And I guess the big question is, I think SE asked this earlier, are they going to do a stream? I don't think they ever announced a stream until 10 days before. So I'm thinking April 10th is when we were going to hear I can't imagine them not doing it as we said before, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It is, it's an interesting setup and something completely different. So I wonder if, even if they do it, if it will be a straight up live stream, like we've normally see, or if it'll be something a little bit different where you don't see the right. like what's going on behind them necessarily. And just kind of focus on them playing like a normal stream. Right that kind of thing or if it's just an audio only stream maybe it's just on well, yeah, let me throw that out there what if they're um what if they have something going on with Sirius, That's, where the it, only way you can hear it is if you're a serious subscriber and they do all four over the radio that way over so the we radio can hear it but yeah that's what i was wondering too and not visually see it which then would you know I think that would be it would be kind of crappy for the fans because of course you want to see it but it would kind of be genius for the band because then it drives up that we got to go see it. Right. Like we got to be there live. Right. right. We got to go see the experience next year when they do it again. And we got to hear what everybody says about that it. would be, that would be such weird after shows. If we just <laughs> listened to it. I mean, cause we've always watched it. Not that we ever comment that much on it, but how much for you does it help watching like queuing in on when something happens because you see it and also hear it, you know? And that's so funny because doing the Wook Club, you know, we obviously mostly re-listen. You don't get to see, sometimes we get to see some of them, you know, the early fish shows especially we're, we're, we're only listening to. So you're not, like we talked about with some of those early shows at some of those smaller venues, you're like, God, I wonder what it must have looked like being in there and seeing them in this small venue doing this. So it is a different concept of, you know, and how, how do you sort of review the shows without seeing them? I guess it's visually it's so nice to see them and we're so used to seeing it and like getting to see some of the lights and, and what's going on on stage and them, you know, how they play and stuff. You and might pay attention more with I think some so. levels because you aren't, you don't have that distracting you, you know? Yeah. And if you just have like a headphones on and are, are listening to it, you kind of get lost in the song more and, 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 and of kind course, of let your head do it and have manix on the tv or canon or something in the background well it really leads to like the theater of the mind right because you're creating the images in your head as you're listening to it so it's kind of your oh, own yeah. true experience of the show when you're doing that as, as opposed to watching it did so your, i don't know did your album oriented rock radio station growing up do something called for headphones only yeah 
Yeah. And they Jim would Lag- play like Rush's Tom, so they play moving pictures. And you were supposed to be stoned on a Friday night at midnight and listen to it. I wish they had that still. That was Jim so Ladd, cool. uh, one of the famous DJs who ended up on Sirius after a while. Oh, used to be right, chaos, right here, chaos. Out here, did headsets all the time and did okay. that and would curate sets for your headphones for like right. that dark kind side of, thing. of the moon and yeah. exactly. And that that always also it, it, that time, Kev, we're really dating ourselves, but that also is the time of like laser Floyds and going to the laser shows at the planetariums, like you know, sneaking yep. in some little alcohol and getting stoned and going to see the it's laser shows. Very brandy. Sneak in yep. that pint of blackberry brandy. Hey there, doggy. Yep, Piper's barking at <laughs> something. Always. Always. Oh, so something else that crossed my radar was someplace in Kentucky is doing a Jerry Garcia um, you know, thing at their museum that's all only focusing on bluegrass, which I find fascinating because I definitely think of Jerry as a bluegrass guy. You see it if you know the story of his life, you see it come up again mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. and over. The you know, in the beginning, then olden in the way great american string band and then with oh, yeah. the acoustic band and i um i really am excited to see some people who go there because i'm not driving to kentucky to see it on play sport it's definitely a uh yeah it'll be a hopefully you get like a a, a traveling version of it at some point right yeah. like where it kind of comes around i mean it seems like it'd be good to go into like san francisco with it or something seeing as that's where you would think <clears throat> the legion of his sort of fans would be in like where you'd want to actually pilgrimage to and not Kentucky. But um yeah, I think it's cool. Like, you know, it's instruments. I think they have his banjo there. That'd be sweet. I mean, yeah, that kind you of know, and, and that is, it's very much ingrained with him, the bluegrass sound, you know, it's, it's very much like you said, like old yeah. in the way and some of those other albums. Well, with he, him and played, Griffin. he played with his first wife. I believe her name was Sarah. Mm-hmm. as a duo and that's when they met hunter and david nelson and all those people back in the early 60s and then i guess when he broke up with her he ended up with mountain girl but um well did there you was see a picture of her that's what made me think of it they had a picture of him with her and did you see um grishman's son sam grishman has been touring a lot and doing the bluegrass thing these days yep. and he was just out here at the troubadour i missed the shows because we were gone but um Love to see him and love to see what he's playing because he's playing like he, he lo- was reading about it and his statement was, you know, he's still trying to keep his father's legacy alive and those songs and mm-hmm. what they mean and doing all that thing. I think it'd be cool for him and Billy Strings to hook up at some point and tour together mm-hmm. or play together or do something together. It would be cool to see. I wonder so. how his dad's doing. I don't know. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, kicking. back in the 70s, he did a lot of like you know, weird jazz kind of stuff. My yeah. stepfather, who was as square as they come, had albums of Grisman's because they used to play it on WTMD back in the 70s when it was a true college radio. So I have tapes that my stepfather would just record, like 45 minutes of the radio playing with just all these weird things. It's bizarre to go back and listen to, but TMD still exists today. But I digress. That's- that's funny. Like just, I mean, I used to do that too. Tape the radio in the hopes that you get the one song that you want off right. of the radio. So then you can erase the other well, ones. I, used, that I used to tape V103 late at night, which was the urban contemporary is what they called it station. And, uh, you know, I'd be like, yeah, check out this mix I made. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the dude would come on and talk. Right. That was always the worst. And how they'd interrupt the song sometime or cut them out or like talk over the beginning. And you're like, oh, God, right, exactly. just play the damn song. Stop talking. I know. I know. I, this would be 103. And they're like, dude, I thought this was your mix. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I guess we can bring this up now. Good, good, oh, good time for Neil our, Young. Uh, your our Neil, Neil Young, Young moment. <laughs> All right, so back in 1979, back in the 80s, 92. Okay, 92 is where we were. George Harrison was approached by Bob Geldof about doing a song called Around the World that Neil Young wrote. And Harrison's reply was, I'm not a Neil Young fan. I hate it. Yeah, I can't stand it. It's mainly his voice. I like some of his songs, but I hated the sound of his voice. His singing is even worse than me. So that is your 
<laughs> Neil Young moment that George Harrison hated on the man. <laughs> That's great. That's great. He was like, I ain't doing his song. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I get it. That that wire thin thing wears thin. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I can see. You know, it's always been sort of that voice of his sort of polarizing because it's it's that. You know, it's also very preachy sometimes and and very. Mm-hmm. But I, I either you, I, it's kind of like either you love it or you hate it, right? And I I want him on Crazy Horse where he sings one verse and they jam for five minutes right. and then he sings another as opposed to something where it's just him singing for five minutes straight. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always liked a lot of Neil Young songs. I think he, again, great um, musician, great sort of a writer great great song stir you know what i mean like it's always he's always been very i tell you what and- one of the one of the most brilliant things the buffalo springfield did was one of their first singles was nowadays clancy can't even sing which is a neil young tune but they got richard fury to sing it because the man has the voice like an angel uh-huh. and it actually got some radio airplay and i guarantee you if they had to let neil sing it we wouldn't have gotten it for what it's worth or at least not from Buffalo Springfield. The song may have existed. So right, right. I it's... did hear that Sully about Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just hope I mean... they have a light. I hope the McDonald's light, like there's an extra light that comes on when they have hot Krispy Kremes. Well, that's just it. Like Krispy Kremes are good for the first like five minutes. They're out, and then they're not. There's not something great with them. I'm expecting they to get see chewy like that. quick. They do get chewy quick. Once they that do. Oil cools. Wait till we get the 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 Krispy Kreme quarter pounder at McDonald's. I can see Cardiac that. Cardiac arrest. It's going to be what? What do they call the special things at McDonald's? You can order. They have like a secret menu. Uh huh. Like yeah. Like you can order like a shit. quarter pounder with a fillet of fish on as a surf and turf or something like that. <laughs> That sounds so gross. <laughs> that does sound so gross. <laughs> so long so since bad. I've eaten there. I gave up eating at drive throughs a few years back. So I don't do Burger King or Wendy's or any of that stuff. But I still a good sub shop with no drive through I'm all <laughs> Well, I was going to say, like, but you know you don't have to go through the drive through at McDonald's. You could go into the Wait, well, no, the, the, the The caveat is any building that has a drive through that you can buy food from, I will not go and eat at. Because just the inherent thing of being able to drive around the building and pick up the food is tells me that there wasn't maybe a lot of care taking in the preparation <laughs> of said food you go to a greasy sub shop at least they throw raw meat on the grill and chop it up in front of you and throw it on a roll you right know? at least you're kind of watching them make it in front of you and you can see what's going on with the meats <laughs> i am a bit are you are you a chopped or a sliced guy for your cheesesteak oh definitely sliced how are you all right yeah. i'm a chop guy i want yeah Stop it up. I used to work at this place called the Pickle Barrel in Fort Collins. You remember the Pickle Barrel in Fort yes, Collins? I remember right? the Pickle Barrel. <laughs> right, right off right off campus there. I worked there for a minute uh, in college, and they had a unique a way of minute. making – What? A hot, a hot minute. <laughs> a hot minute. They had a way – they had a unique way of making sandwiches at the time, and like some of the hot sandwiches, I learned a lot about how you – chop it and then we'd spray like water on it and cover it up and like let it heat up in these weird ways and then melt the cheese over it and stuff and then being able to create your own sandwiches in there like it was fun i you know and I, anybody who works in the restaurant business knows the horror stories of kitchens and stuff and that was one of those places too especially at that age, you're like oh man <laughs> if i wasn't making this myself i definitely would not want people like eating some of this food that i'm watching other people make so you well. The only but, time yeah. I did sliced was I worked at this um, restaurant and we had filet mignon every night. And after a couple of days, you had to use it. So we would freeze it halfway and then slice it on the slicer and take that and make a cheesesteak with it. But it was basically hey. falling apart because it was filet mignon just sliced it. You it almost had to flash it. cook it. It was like that quick it cooked through. Um, decadent thing. The guy who owned the place didn't like us doing that, though. I'm sure. I guess I would have rather you threw it away. I don't know what we were supposed to do with the filet mignon when it's done. It's done. (laughs) Right. And like, it seems like such a waste when you throw that 
stuff away, you're like, well, why wouldn't I just make a sandwich out of it and eat it? Like it's still, you know, we're paying for it and it's here. So they bring in the whole back, the whole tenderloin. You cut that <laughs> shit down. Uh, I don't yeah. miss that at all. <clears throat> no. no, I love cooking. I love cooking to this day. I do not like cooking in a restaurant. No, exactly. And I don't even like cooking anything anymore, but like, I definitely restaurant work is tough work. I don't miss that at all. For I, sure. I find it very Thank Zen you. to cooking at home in the morning. I wake up and I make my omelet and, you know, do you remember, some... um, did you remember daredevil? Uh-huh. Um, when, um, what's his name? Diorfano Kingpin would make the eggs every morning and make the omelet. I, it's just this, there's a very Zen thing to that. Um, speaking of your morning. Marvel, Right? Speaking like, of Marvel, tell me about the hotel for a minute before we spin. Oh, the yeah. We can get into that. a little bit of. Yes. So, as you all know, I was in Paris the last week, which uh, is epic. But we went, we spent the first three days at Disneyland Paris, and we're big Marvel nerds. So, we stayed at the, it's called uh, the Hotel New York, but it's a Marvel themed hotel. And if you're a Marvel fan, it is unbelievable. Like, it is so cool. They had a, then exhibit going on like women in Marvel exhibit. And they had like, there's a bar in there where, up like Iron Man. What was that all about that picture? Well, they had, yeah, they had a whole thing, like this whole area where you could go into and take the pictures in like some of the suits and some of the, the fake backgrounds behind you and like stand on the floor as like Spider-Man, but then you flip the picture and it looks like you're on the roof, like Spider-Man. Right. It was really cool. Um, really fun. I mean, really fun. And then Disneyland Paris is, uh, we're big Disneyland freaks out here and Disneyland Paris was really fun. It's a little bit more roller coastery. It's a little bit elevated. I would say like space mountain there is a true roller coaster. Like it's got a loop. Right. It's got a corkscrew in it. The Indiana Jones rides, not a Jeep. It's an actual roller coaster. So, and the pirates of the Caribbean is a whole area. It's like really different. And it's kind of like the Caribbean style pirates of the Caribbean, like the French Polynesian type type stuff. It's, it's really cool, but the Marvel area too, like they do have an Avengers campus there. They have a they have a roller coaster there that they don't have in LA, which again was a little violent, like I would say. Like it's a little they beat you up a little bit. Like my heads were definitely, I mean, I can't ride roller coasters I'm too like old. I, used to anyway, I feel but like I'm too yeah. old for a roller coaster these days. It's a little brutal, but for the kids, it's it's really cool. They have a whole like thing too where you get to meet the character, like you do this whole meet the Avengers and like you get to go in and like obviously it's fake but like we got to meet loki and like it was really cool you take pictures with him and talk it's it was really fun like i highly recommend if you're loki have seems kids. very big in that, picture. that yeah with the hat the helmet the hat. and all made him like what was he like Dude. eight feet with the helmet i mean <laughs> and he nailed the voice like he really had the voice down too he sounded just like the it, it was it was really fun if you have kids I I like i thought kids. you were the tree of life dude <laughs> or if you, or if you're just a Marvel nerd and, and want a vacation, I highly recommend. It was really fun, and then and then we spent three days there, and then we spent like eight days in Paris in the city. And Paris is incredible; like it's just people want to know if you ate cheese and or how was the cheese and how were the lines. The cheese was amazing. Uh, yes, we had a lot of charcuterie, a lot of wine. Um, the French onion soup, which is just onion soup, there is fabulous like every cafe i went in i Why tried it french onion because you're in french you're in france so it's just onion soup it's like french bread it's just bread but i'll tell you the difference between the french onion soup in france and here is onions like there there's hardly any onions in the soup which i love it's basically Do they cook them down is it just cooked down onion cooked down onions but not you know like a lot of times here you're like spoonfuls of onions in every bite there. It's like a lot of the bread and cheese, which I love like the soggy bread and the melted cheese in it. It is so good. Like I couldn't get enough of it. Like I said, every cafe we went to, I had to order and try it. It was so good. Um, highlights of the city. I mean, we did the touristy thing on this trip. We did the Louvre. We did the Arc de Triomphe. We did the Eiffel tower on our anniversary. That's why we went. It was did our you see the Mona Lisa? We did see the Mona Lisa. I posted a picture of the line of people at the Mona Lisa and the line of people at the Venus de Milo are insane. But was it, it weird it seeing moves. the Mona Lisa in person after seeing it your whole life in pictures and on the internet? And It was weird seeing every single one of those things in person after seeing them for so long in like French books and on TV, like the Arc de Triomphe, like totally different seeing it live. Like you're like, this thing is incredible. Like it's huge. Like the Eiffel Tower You've seen it a thousand times, but until you're there in front of it, you're like, 
this is impressive. And then you're climbing up it and stuff, and you're like, this is a real feat of engineering. And this thing is like this magical. is all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really cool. And no, we went to Notre Dame and saw, I mean, it's all closed, and the fire definitely messed it up a lot, but they're working on fixing it. And uh we found a Banksy. We went, I hunted down the Banksy that we found in Paris, which I was very excited to finally see it in real life. A Banksy. There was a what bus sticker in Paris. But a couple of them. There's one near Notre Dame. I told Scoy, who's over there right now, when he goes to find the Banksy to look for the Wook Plus sticker too, because I put it as close to it as I could. Um, yeah, but uh, we did not do any weird shit. My wife did want to do escargo. She's had it before, but we did not do uh, any anything really weird. Um, Frog legs are not weird, and they're damn good. We did do yes. We had a lot of. I mean, a lot of good. No Moulin Rouge. A lot of the food. The food is just delicious. I can't. I can't say enough about the whole city. Everything. Actually, we're huge fans. We're actually looking at apartments right now to <laughs> buy there and, and purchase and like have a place there now. So, a lot Moulin of fun. Rouge? Great trip. Did you go to? Moulin? We did not. No, no. This trip we hit. We had like kind of like the Louvre. We had five things we wanted to see at the Louvre. We got those. This trip we had like a list of five things we really wanted to do. We nailed those, save the rest for next. Cause you can't try to do too much. I mean, it's a lot. And I mean, we went yeah, from kind of the Arc de Triumph is a whole afternoon, right? Yeah. I'm walking up the Champs Elysees and like all of that stuff. It's, you know, and, and we're kind of still kind of couch potato. We working from home and all that stuff. So, you know, we don't exercise a ton. We do a little bit, but for eight, nine, 10 days straight, I was getting over 20,000 steps a day, like between Disneyland and walk in Paris. And so it's exhausting. It, it's, and I came back with a little bit of a cold from it all, but, um, it's, it's totally COVID it. cold or just cold, cold. Nah, just a little, just a little dry throat cough going on. All right. Well, before your throat gives out, why don't we hit the random fish generator since we're back into letting Scott Marks and crew pick what we're listening pick to for us. Let me bring it up here. Let's let's get it on. What is Zidane headbutt? What the hell? The French, uh, the French soccer player oh. who uh, headbutted a dude in the. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with five. Let's run through it and get it deep in there. See where we land. All right, here we go. One. Oh boy. Come on. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, an 87. Wow. All right. Two. I'm going to land on something lame. Oh, there. I had the limestone show. Ooh. Three. I think I suggested that for that upcoming thing. Ooh, a really recent one there. Four. Come on. Come on. All right. Oh. A nectar's 88. Whoa. All right, here we go. This will be it. Number five. Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, please. Yeah, 2012. All right. Oh. There's a lot going on here. Sample. Party time. Simple. Axla tube. Kill Devil Falls. Water in the sky. Babylon baby. Bathtub gym. Wow. It's a heck of a first set. Lyrics change. Lyrics change. Lyrics change. Split open. I feel like I, I feel like I let you all down. Hopefully, this is worth the listen. Trey requested that fish tuck in his shirt, and then he, he changed the lyrics to everything around tuck. So it'll be one of those fun shows where he's just okay. in, a, in his own that. having fun. I don't know. Not Carl bad. Your heart on trumpet. All right, we'll see. Shine a light, a lengthwise. Okay, this could be fun. This could be fun. Yeah. Oh, SC was at this show. What, oops, what do you think? How was it, SC? Had some people get on stage. Okay. Boy, Carl Gerhardt there. Fun. Say. Fun. Good show. Good show to be at. Fun. Was it good? Would you Everything? want to get on stage? Everything you'd know. <laughs> I wouldn't either. I think that'd be weird. I think it Solid would be really. Solid weekday show. There we go. Really weird. Solid weekday show. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I will say we saw, uh, I think it was Sawdust Torture posted something today, and we'll go out on this because I'm interested to see what the chat has to say about it too but would you rather do one sphere show just one or have seen the new year's game hinge what do you think there you go i Comment. think personally Airports go to the comments leave us leave us comments i'll tell you what i think i would i i would rather and saw the game hinge show that's something that i never thought we'd get and that was 
30, 40 years in the making. So I'll take that. The sphere, I think, will be absolutely phenomenal, but you'll have more chances on that. So I think, New Year's Eve, yeah. That's it. One time, one time only. One time only. Yep. So yep. and if you're watching this later, comment, let us know what you think. Uh, we'll be back Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. There you go, Megan. A lot of New Year's Eve ones. I like it. Uh, you guys are agreeing. I, I appreciate that chat. Good job. I like that. All right, Kev, we out? Are we good? That was fun. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Make sure, make sure somebody screenshotted whatever show we're doing. I got it. Because that's going to yes, be the I'll question all week. What show is it? <laughs> what show is it? Oh, yeah. I'll make, yeah. I'll screenshot it, though. We'll post I it. I miss triggering Tim there. to SA. Hopefully Sunday morning. We'll yeah, get a yeah, yeah. That. Tim will be back. He's doing well. He's needed a break he filled in for me so filling in for him now it's all good but all right. uh it's good seeing you kev it's fun two nights we had a good uh 48 hours together yeah. <laughs> and if you like what you're seeing the best way to support us is become a member it's become a member we got ago. some we got some special things coming for the members actually the next taper's choice the taper's show choice. is yeah. Holy moly, that was a lot of car going by. But we, uh, we next Taper's Choice show is about ready to get released. It's going to be the Nectar show from the tour. I'm going to put some stuff out specifically for members only first before we release the whole show. So you guys will get a chance to see that first. And hopefully in the next week, that'll all come out. So, yeah. Like, love subscribe, you join. Thanks for watching.